Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're Odyssey. Welcome to our channel. Today watching the Apothecary Diaries, Season 1, Episode 16. Last episode was massive. We got what looked like to be Mau Mau's mother. Or at least part of her. Yeah, we kind of got, like, the lower part of the face. Yeah. Man. We I, learned some things about her. I don't like Master Lacan. Granted, I know that he is a man of uh, high IQ mm -hmm. in terms <laughs> of, you know dealing with people and I, big I strategist i don't know how much of what he said is true or if it's all true and that's where i'm at or if it's being uh delivered in a way that is manipulative yeah uh i really can't a hundred percent go in any direction on that character i did have a few things from editing last episode that i wanted to kind of bring up to you before going into episode 16 the first is, so Lacan says that he made her less exquisite. Correct. And you and I kind of theorized about how a man like him in terms of what he's giving us, in terms of his strategy and how, why he liked Mao Mao's mother. We were theorizing about what it could have been Potentially that he pregnancy. did. Right. But I remembered that there's something in the opening and I almost don't want to say it just so you'll look out for it. Mm. I think we see in the opening an, a theory of what that is that he did that is, is not it? pregnancy. How about I, how, you could just maybe watch the opening and see if you spot it. Okay. Cause I and feel if like, I don't, then I'm a big stupid idiot and you'll no. tell me afterwards? <laughs> no, I would never call you a big stupid idiot. Okay. But I just think that it would probably be better if you go into the opening looking for an answer to that question okay. or a possible theory answer to that question. Okay. Um, Another thing that I, I obviously took away from that episode, the idea that he has it out for Jinshi because of Mao Mao. That is something that I'm definitely going to go into this next episode really thinking about. I really love the glasses scene still. Yeah. It makes me think like he was reading his opponent. Mm -hmm. Like that's what that scene gives me. But one kind of fun thing that I was thinking about, I don't know anything about Shogi or Go. I don't know. I, I believe that those games are strategy games. I know nothing about them really or how to play. I also don't know what the difference is between them and what those games in their differences could say about a person that is good or bad at them. We have a line by Lakan that Mau Mau's mother was skilled at both. He could beat her in the latter, but never the former. Interesting. And it makes me wonder if that is telling me something about their dynamic or which one of them was maybe better at a specific thing yeah, than the other. Yeah, whether it's in terms deception, of... whether it's manipulation. Right. Or like, yeah. It, that's a re that's right. a really interesting line to bring up. I feel like I would love to know what the differences are specifically mm -hmm. because that could go a long way in terms of theorizing. Right. Part of me, huh. and also what it brings me to is the first time we really see his character, he is playing one of them. Yeah. And I almost feel like what if he is always playing the one that she would beat him at. Interesting. So, the, like, what if he's still trying to, like, he can't let go of that. Yeah. He can't let go of her or can't get, mm. let go of the fact that she could beat him at something. Yeah. And so I just really wanted to bring that up. And I wish I knew if there was, like, a distinct difference between those two that would give me anything. Yeah. I, I can't help you out. I played a couple months of Shogi, never touched Go, and Chess. And with the limited knowledge I have, I could not make a educated guess at it. I am a bit worried about what's what's going to be uh, asked of Mao Mao this episode. We were given the setup of what mission she's going to be given, but I'm just I, I in my heart of hearts, I'm just very anxious at her being set up for failure. Right. I feel like I am also nervous about that, but I also have maybe an unrational optimism toward like nothing really bad is ever actually going to happen to Mau Mau and the stakes in terms of Mau Mau's safety are never actually going to be tested and like really tested. Gotcha. But that's probably just me trying to protect myself. Ready? Yeah. Sweet. We've seen majority of that first half of the intro stuff. 
Interesting. Oh. Oh, did you see it? Yeah. What what could he have actually done to know. cause it? Like, how can you f Oh, I just wanted you to see that the hand changes to bandages. Unless it was something that was like a reoccurring substance that she'd be consuming, I'd be I I don't know. Like what one time could you give somebody something one time and it puts them in a certain state until what is the reason Mau Mau tests things on her own skin? Yeah. The bandage wrapped around her arm. Interesting. Her fixations. An acquaintance of an acquaintance. つまり、<笑> Interesting. <laughs> もし気になるようでしたら、こちらが住所です。ファキングニュー。気になるなら行ってみればいいということ。イフイピックスヨーインテレスト。ハウウェルプレパイド。最初からこうなることを読んでいたみたいだ。面白い。明日お時間をいただ
that's probably what the purpose of his will was to oh, fix that. Like Damn it. Do you think the fit? You said the fishbowl had a square bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that that was the thing on the window? It looked like it did. Now it looks like it's round, but it looked like it had square earlier. It might distort the sunlight. Boy. It does have a square bottom. <laughs> Are they related? He worked on it because he stuck something in there. そして。みんな昔のように茶会でもするといい。もしかして。あそこの棚に飾っていたのではないですかえ、そうですけど、寒くなると死んでしまうので、冬場は茶会をする暖かい昼間だけ。ティーパーティーズ。ちょうど今みたいな時間です。ここ数年は金魚を飼うこともなく
そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そ
are smart so that things can be left unsaid. Yeah. Jinchi hasn't been a character that I would say is not smart. I would say that he is able to do deduce things. He does know the ways in which the world works and he does know that there are so many cases where things could be not as they seem. Yeah. And he's not one that's going to fall for rumors, if you will. And so they've always been in this good... Their dynamic has always been kept at a place that didn't feel unequal, necessarily. But introducing a character that I feel like is on Mau Mau or her father's level yeah. of not only are they talented at deducing things and figuring things out, but they're also pretty good at being manipulative in terms of how they go about sharing information. Yeah. I feel like Mau Mau, we've seen her a few times be careful with how she gives information, leaving sort of clues or saying things in a way that might lead a mind to travel where she wants it to travel. Yeah. And I feel like this character, Lacan, is a great example of that. It's it's worrisome if it was ever like one versus one because within the nature of being so capable within that realm of being able like of deduction where not only you have the capabilities of deduction but you are leading others to figure it out for themselves i think a lot of that comes down to experience and time because because even thinking of the uh the pipe right like the withholding of that information but being able to deduce how it happened that we got to see from master lacan all of that information is is gathered throughout multiple in instances of like okay mau mau has a certain amount of experience based off of her age and it's a lot and it's vast but because of how much more Master Lacan has seen, that well that he has of information, I think would be much fuller than Mau Mau's. Mm -hmm. We do know that, like, Mau Mau's father in particular, there are things that she still, like, she still holds him in, ter like, high regard in terms of being able to figure out things faster than her or handle things still better. Like, she still feels like there's a lot for her to learn yeah. and experience and ways to go about handling kind of the more delicate side of things like decorum and politics and you know and not necessarily just coming right out with conjecture i really want to talk about in terms of the idea that he could be manipulative because he definitely has the power to do so or the talent to do so and what he would need to be manipulative lacan i would like to talk about kind of two things from this episode to different things that I feel like I want to talk about why he would have posed this, why he would have put this out there. And the first one is the idea of why is he bringing this metal worker will to the table for Jinshi to give to Mau Mau. We have a line when Jinshi hands it over to Mau Mau at the very beginning of the episode about it, like, if it interests you, if you're enthusiastic about it. And it almost just, I still wonder so heavily, like, why are you testing her because you want to see that she meets an expectation that I you're hoping for? I don't even think it's testing. Or are you giving her something that you know that she'd enjoy? So I think it's, like, Master Lacan is communicating to Mau Mau and talking to Mau Mau through Jinchi without Jinchi even realizing it. Like, uh, even within their conversation at the end of the episode and that how, how Jinchi was interrupted by Master Lacan, like, you could see which of the two is more experienced and holds more weight within that room, right? I... I I, it's less of a test than it was to me before and more of a, I'm talking to you. Yeah, like definitely, you could think about what the will was for that plot. That plot was the father talking in clues to his three sons. Yeah. Sending them a message about what he wanted them to be able to do going forward was find out where they all fit in an equal balance and stay together. Yeah. And 
I really like the idea that he is trying to send some sort of message to Mau Mau. I like that idea more so than him just tricking and testing. Yeah. I like the idea of there being a hidden message because like it takes me back to Mau Mau wondering if the different colors that the fire would be sparked, you know, would be code and we're sending messages through that. Yeah. I mean, like, it, 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 okay, if Mau Mau's in the room here, it's not even, like, if Mau Mau's in the room at the end of the episode with Master Lacan and Jinshi, it's it's just Mau Mau would be understanding everything that Master Lacan is actually saying uh, w- within this conversation. But what I want to, like, hone in on is what, what Master Lacan is saying about Mau Mau in, in the way of talking about the youngest son, right? Like, ritual utensils don't mean anything to me. And then it goes on, I didn't want to keep good talent buried. J- elder or younger brother shouldn't matter. And Jinchi's like, oh yeah, talking about this this son who was able to figure everything out, but Master Lacan's looking at the wine, just bi- the wine's Mau Mau, you know, at this point. Those with talent should receive attention. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we could also have in the conversation, are we also talking about Jinshi and his brother, mm, the Emperor? Yeah. Could we also be talking about that he's deduced? Yeah. Could could he also have deduced who Jinshi is? Like, I think there's a lot that could be here that I feel like it's so... I feel like if you're a person in this world and you're talking to him, he almost knows that you might interpret something different from it. And he might think that's funny. Like if you were like, oh my God, he knows. He knows who I am and he could tell everyone. And he's just like saying something completely different, but he knows you're running laps yeah. in your head. Yep. And he enjoys that you're running laps in your head. Man, I, I'm so glad a character like this is being introduced. I, I Even before this episode started, like I definitely have anxiety like and fear of the fear of something negative happening to Mau Mau. But the more I'm able to see of these interactions, the more excited I am to see how far Mau Mau can go and how much she can see. The next episode, like, I don't know whether or not to expect this or it's just what I want through applying Jinshi's makeup and Jinshi serving this drink and telling Mau Mau about, you know, what happened with the courtesan. You worked at the Verdigree house. You'd probably be a good person to ask. I cannot wait to hear Mau Mau's inner monologue and putting everything together. Like, it's it's going to be so f- fantastic if it goes down that way. And there could be a positive, like, there could be a positive in terms of relationship, dynamic, and understanding of each other for Jinshi to be the one. Like, if you thought of this in a positive lens, like, Lacan's not in a villain at all and we're going complete, like, he's a good guy route with a way of thinking about it, it could be... I'm not going to tell you about Mau Mau. I want you to learn about Mau Mau's past and her family from Mau Mau. Mm. So I'm going to tell you something to ask her so that she can tell you herself stuff. That's a positive way to look at it. Do you think it will go in the direction of Mau Mau figuring out what specifically happened to her mother? Interesting. Or do you think it will be just that, of course, this would be the thing that you do to de- decrease the value of a courtesan and like and that just being put them out of commission poison them let put them make them bedridden you know i absolutely despise the idea that this could be leading to telling mamao exactly what happened mm-hmm. because what that would then lead me to is are we torturing her with information are we telling her how i did it and either giving her the idea that there actually has been a cure this whole time and what it is or the fact that there is nothing. Yeah. Or are we are we trying to dispel a current idea of what happened? Are we look, trying to show the truth look, when there might be a misconception? I my biggest fear is that Master Lacan knows that Mao Mao doesn't know what the fuck happened and or how to cure Mao Mao's mom based off of, of she would already be fine by now if she did. Master Lacan is using that information to put the roundabout thought uh, or pieces together in front of Mau Mau that he's the one who did this, 
but is le leaving it far enough away from him just through conjecture that it will lead Mau Mau to being like, he's telling this man is the one who did it. He's telling me that he did it. He, I, I don't know how to fix it. He might, I'm going to accuse this man of doing it. And what, based off of what accusation, just me telling a story about something completely different to Jinshi, like of, of you're blindly accusing somebody of my of my Standing. rank with with no evidence or nowhere close to it. How dare you? You know. Interesting. I mean, that would definitely be a way to look at how this character could totally turn villain in terms of putting Mao Mao in a position that we've been afraid of her being in is being kind of tricked or pushed to a point where her conjecture or her speculation or her realizing the truth and then calling it out would put her in danger. That being said, that would, that would, for that to happen, there, there would have to be a lot of feelings within Mau Mau about her mother that we haven't heard yet. Like that would push her to doing something that bombastic and loud and immediate as to accuse Master Lacan. Mm -hmm. Um, I what did want to bring up in that regard because you brought up the idea of confrontation. Uh, he's keeping himself away from her. He could have met her on all of these occasions. He could have been there in the room when she deduced these things. He could have been even closer to the source. He's keeping himself as an observer on the outskirts, having not run into her, yeah. actually, and her not see him. Which would make an accusation seem much more baseless, like right? You don't, like, you, yeah. I, I don't even know who you are. I haven't even seen you. Mm -hmm. And then it could tie back into, okay, if Mau Mau does get punished for that, if she did that, that one tall uh, court lady that we saw within here could, could know more about Master Lacan, and that could be the, you know, like, he's a dangerous man. I just, I keep feeling there's some fiber of my being yeah. that is like, Anna, do not go too far. too far. I often go too far. With believing that he, he can be a manipulative, shady man, yeah. but do not go, go too far with that being literal maliciousness. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Like actual, like he is actually trying to torture and hurt. Yeah. He, like, how far on the, he's some red flags, definitely, but how far on the, like, I have criminal scale, really, is he? I don't want to go. That's fair. I don't want to like, lead myself too far down some sort of rabbit hole of believing that he is, like, definitive something. I have, like, so many ideas of reasons why he would be that way and reasons why he would take it out on Mau Mau mm -hmm. out of jealousy. But uh, we haven't been given any of that. So you're right with not wanting to go too far down. And I keep clinging to things. I'm like, oh, well, if how would I make sense of what he said if it isn't yeah. something like he did something terrible? How would I make sense of the bandaged hands in the intro if he didn't do something terrible? And then I'm like, he did say there were other people that were interested in Mau, Mau, yeah. Mau Mau's mom too. He specifically said there was almost some sort of, I think he said there was like a rival. Like there was two men. Yeah. And then he did something that would decrease value. Is love and her leaving being a courtesan and getting pregnant decreasing value? Maybe. Could I could I make it something? Like, could I shine a light on it in a way that makes it seem so much more... Positive and like... like a I'm romantic doing... tragedy like yeah. Romeo and Juliet no, I, or I'm something? Glad, like... <laughs> I'm glad of you bringing it up because, the, like, I don't want to be just, oh, this is the way it's gonna... That's not... That I don't like thinking like that. I I want it to be at least like somewhat equal and open of all possibilities because I think that that's just as likely. Like imagine that this is the roundabout way of getting like this. This was the story of how your mom ended up the way that she was, in, instead of the I did this to her and now I'm doing it to you. I feel like I just need to continue having the word love in my brain when I think about this because. I feel like being introduced to courtesan mom, possible high level official in the court, having some sort of relationship mm -hmm. or attraction, and then Mau Mau and Jinchi. I feel like because there's a parallel there in terms of like romance or love or affection or care, that I 
need to remind myself that that could especially with Mau Mau's line her looking at her pinky the idea of like what would love feel like what type of medicine would it make I can't completely leave it in the dust yeah in terms of what what parallel is actually being shown? What compare and contrast is actually is happening it a parallel or is it like an example of what didn't work? What didn't yeah. work? This is different. What compare and contrast is actually happening fair. here? What are the common linings within this uh, story that's being woven? Um, definitely, how really want to know. How Tell do you me pronounce? Your secrets. Uh, is it Basin or Basin? I think I'm going to go with Basan. Basan? Basan or Basan? I, I know that Jinji said it before when he was sword fighting with him. Yeah. But I don't exactly remember the him, pronunciation. Him looking like Goshen is funny. Like That's I, not who I... I thought he looked like Lihaku more, but maybe I was just going too heavy on like hair color, eye color. Yeah, I think thing. a lot of it's disposition. Yeah, but I mean, so during the episode, I don't know if you heard me, but I said the word rival. Yeah. If this is a romance anime or that is one of the genres it would fit in if that is the case because right now it's heavily one-sided and the uh, person that is sided toward love might not even know they are sided toward love um there's normally a rival character that isn't actually a rival but is there for the viewer to be like oh no a rival yeah <laughs> and i'm like oh he could give, he could be a good choice because he's like mm, you know i don't i'm having to lead you around and just remember you're following me ah oh, you're doing things i told you not to do again yeah. but he's still seeing her like positive qualities and being impressed by her mm -hmm. and if he is somewhat reminding her of goshen she has said time and time again how he would be a great marriage candidate and yeah. he is a lovely man yeah and I, I can't I, forget that. I really like him as a character. I'm glad that it wasn't just a one-off thing. And I think that it it will go a long ways in showing how, like, Mau Mau can kind of open any, anybody up in that sense of, like, that Mau Mau gave him a look when they were in the, like, the tea house of, like, ask more. Like, yes, yes, you can trust. We're going to figure this out. And then he trusted her with it. And then they did. Like, it's just going to only gain and, and and garner more and more trust and faith in Mau Mau, you know? And another reason why it could be compelling in terms of rivalry is the first time we meet him, he is sword fighting with yeah, Jinshi. Yeah. Yeah. There is a competitive nature there. There is a friendship there. Mm -hmm. The drama that could ensue, if uh, that is the case. It would, and it would make sense if there was a relation to Goshen why he would be the one sparring with Jinshi at that point. I, I love that Mau Mau referred... Or gave the reference of Loman, like like her dad back in the village, not only for like we've heard before, like yeah, more business, but I like with the it's deduction like a different with, tone to it this with time. the deduction of how the father lived and that he was sick and uh, and you know had these symptoms. I hope that if these sons have a similar you know reaction, they would find a cure within Mau Mau's dad right like she says like I need to I need to leave the younger brother with this it's yep. like she realizes he's gonna be the one she realizes the message the metal. Yeah. That he's the one that is going to be taking over the job that it will has led to the symptoms that the dad before passing experienced yeah and then maybe even contributed to the death and I really loved that before when we've heard her said it it's a lot more like oh this will be good for business and a lot more of that energy to it and this it was like you know the this happened to the father there's stuff that can be done that can prolong mm -hmm. this guy's life and make him healthier here you go if you need anything Man. that's who, who to go to i love the way that the father set up like how to make the metal i love the, the idea the, the ratio drawers are the <laughs> coolest thing like that. that i've ever seen and mark my words in my will, there is going to be something theatric and dramatic, and it will, whoever's it, it is meant for or left for, I hope that they solve it. It is going to be, like, think about the production. This man, like, was laughing, and whoever built this his face being like, I am putting a formula here that many people wish they had right in plain view. And you don't even fucking know it yet. You don't even know it. 
and I'm going to make it so you have to put a fishbowl in front of a window to to ignite something to be able to mold a key. Are you kidding me? That's like light from Death Note. That is the coolest shit I've ever seen, and I love him. It's he's not... my top. He's in my top three favorite characters of Apothecary Diaries, and I didn't even get to meet him before he died. It's not surprising to me that you would adore the concept of a will being written. Like, what? What's that book called? Is it like Secret? Yeah. Is that what the book's mm-hmm. called? Yeah. Leading so people on these like treasure hunts with cryptic pictures and poems and stuff. Paintings. So good. <laughs> so it interesting. I want to go back and look at a uh, the actual key being made. Oh, like when Mau Mau was like kind of explaining how it, it was happening. Yeah, because like we we see, like it goes from us talking about it opening to directly us pulling out. And you what see was a there. hole in the lid yeah. of the box. That's so cool. A mold for the key. And she recognizes that it's still a little soft and warm, because it was literally just, just made. made. That's so badass. The metal stuck in the keyhole must have melted from the heat and flowed into the mold below before hardening. So if you had shoved too hard, you could have ruined maybe a kind of malleable metal, and then it would have maybe not flowed properly into the key. The idea of it being the same metal that the formula makes is there too, you know, and that's why it was so quick to heat up. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking cool, man. What a guy. What a guy. That that is the author of the Apothecary Diaries putting himself in this story. Yeah, I believe it. All right, that's all I have you. I think so. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.